All right, guys, let's go over the rest of these questions and finish up this review. So this is going to be part two uh, for these two videos. All right, here we go. So we're back to triangles. Again, you can always use Sokotoa if you have two unknown uh, legs or uh, two unknown sides uh, for your right triangles. I'm going to use my understanding of relationships for 45 degrees, 45 degrees and 90 degree right triangles. So the idea is that the ones that are across from them, I'm gonna use just a different letter because I know there's an X already. So I'm gonna use just A. So this is gonna be A and this one's gonna be A. And the one that is the hypotenuse is gonna be A times the square root of two. So I'm just gonna set these two equal to each other, A and eight times the square root of six. So this is going to be end up being my y, since those have to be the same, all right? And then for the hypotenuse, I'm gonna multiply, that's actually gonna be x, I'm gonna multiply eight times the square root of six times the square root of two. So I'm gonna put those together, you get eight times the square root of 12. You can break that down if you want. That's the square root of four times the square root of three. So that would be eight times two, which is 16 times the square root of three. Now, again, feel free to use decimals, feel free to use Sokotoa, but you would get uh, the same answers here for my, let's see, my y and for my x. All right, let's find uh, the answers for part b using similar idea, but this time 60 degrees, 30 degrees, and 90 degrees. So again, for 30 degrees, that is going to be equal to x, all right? I'm gonna use the same thing, A, all right? Then this one uh, is going to be across from the 60 degree angle, which is A times the square root of three. And the last one for that hypotenuse is gonna be two A. So the one that they give me is the A times the square root of three and 21. So I'm gonna set those equal to each other. So A times the square root of three equals 21. Divide both sides by the square root of three. Now to rationalize the denominator, I'm gonna go ahead and multiply times the square root of three over the square root of three, which is 21, times the square root of three over three, reduce 21 over three to be seven times the square root of three. All right, so that's actually gonna be my x, all right, because these are equal to each other. So x is equal to seven times the square root of three. And then for my y, I'm just going to double that, all right, two times that a value that I found. So two times seven times the square root of three is just gonna be 14 times the square root of three. So those are my two answers for these missing pieces for this triangle. All right, let's keep going. Okay, we did one of these earlier, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy down the X and Y values for the original, all right? And again, you might not be able to do this if you're not using the iPad, um, but the idea is I'm just gonna copy them from earlier in the review. So copy them, so bear with me. Again, you can always just find them again, it's not that big a deal, just to save myself some time on the video time. Okay, so there's the original. Let's find the transformations. So in this one, I've got three transformations. I've got that plus two inside, it's gonna be a horizontal shift. I've got the minus five on the outside, that's a vertical shift. And then this negative in front is gonna be a reflection over the x-axis. I'm gonna list all three. It does not ever matter the order in which you list them. So two to the left, is gonna be that plus two inside. Five down is gonna be that minus five at the end. And then that negative in front is a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, so now the key thing, I think probably the hardest thing of this, is how do we make sure that we know that these are going to be, uh, which ones are going to affect the x and which one are gonna affect the y. So the two to the left, is going to affect the x going to affect the x values. Go ahead and subtract two here. And then for the new y values, I'm gonna reflect over the x-axis, which makes all the y values become the opposite. And then I will be shifting them down, so subtracting five to get those new y values. Alright, so let's find our new ordered pairs that we're gonna graph. So this is gonna be negative eight, negative five, negative two, one, and four. And my new y values are gonna be, let's see, that's the opposite of four is negative four, minus five is negative nine. Opposite of two is negative two, minus five is negative seven. That's gonna be negative 11. That's gonna be negative five. And then negative three minus five is negative eight. 
All right, so let's plot all these new points. So negative 8, negative 9. So that's negative 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm going to say it's a little off the grid here for negative 9. Negative 5, negative 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That one's right here. Negative 2, negative 11. So that was negative 9. That was off the grid. So 10, 11. I'll put that about here. 1, negative 5. That one I can graph. And then 4, negative 8, which is this last one here. All right? So here's what it looks like when you connect them. Kind of tough to see, but I hope you see all three transformations for the left and down and also the reflection. Let's get the new domain and range. The new domain is going to be negative 8 to positive 4. And the new range, the lowest y value is negative 11. The highest y value is negative 5. OK, so some transformations. Some more evaluating. We're looking at uh, plugging in negative 11, where it says x for h of x. So h of negative 11 is going to be 21 over negative 11 minus 2 which is going to be 21 over negative 13. Uh, I cannot reduce that, so put that negative up front and write the opposite of 21 over 13. Okay, plugging in negative 4a where it says x in the f of x function, it's going to be negative 4a squared plus 2 times negative 4a minus 3. So that's going to be 16a squared minus 8a minus 3. All right, and that's it, because I can't uh, simplify any of that. Don't have any uh, like terms. All right, let's go to number 13. Some more triangles. In this first one, part A, I have two out of three of the side lengths for the triangle. So I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. So 2 times the square root of 3 squared plus 8 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. I think we're all good on 8 squared being 64. This one can be a little tricky when you've got one number that's not in the square root, but one is. What I always think is you got to square both. So the square of 2, or 2 squared is 4. And then the square root of 3 squared, remember those are kind of inverses of each other in terms of they are inverse operations, they undo each other. This is going to be like 4 times 3. And then don't forget, you do need to multiply those once you do that. So 4 times 3 is going to give me 12, plus 64 is going to be equal to x squared. So that's going to be 76. So to find, sorry, that's x squared. To find the length of this, it's the square root of 76. And again, you can go ahead and reduce that if you want. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't think there'd be any perfect squares in there. Well, maybe there were 19 and 4, I think, is what it would be. Anyway, you could write 2 times the square root of 19, or you could get a decimal approximation for the square root of 76, which is approximately 8.7, using your calculator. All right, another one where I have a 30, 60, 90 like we did earlier in part one. So 30, 60, 90. Going across from the 30 is going to be my, uh, I'm going to call it A. We can call it X. That's fine. Going across the 60 degrees is A times the square root of 3. And then across from the right angle, the hypotenuse is 2A. So I'm going to set these equal to each other, 42 and 2A. So if that's true, then A is equal to 21, which A is the same as X. So I'm going to write x equals 21. That's one of my answers. And then y is going to be 21 times the square root of 3. Feel free to get decimals. Use Sokotoa. That will totally be fine. OK, let's do another parent function, graph for the parent function, transform it, uh, get new domain or range. All right, so this one is the quadratic, which is f of x equals x squared. And graphing the original points there, I'm going to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Squaring those gets 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. So plotting those points, this is my parabola. Hopefully you're feeling comfortable with this now. We've done it a lot in class. So here is that parent function parabola. All right. Now we are going to transform it. We got, looks like three of them happening here. I'm going to have the minus 2 inside, that's a horizontal shift. The plus 5 on the outside, that's going to be a vertical shift. And then the minus in front is another reflection across the x-axis. So I'm going to put 2 to the right for that minus 2 inside. Remember, think opposite. 
five up for out. Okay, so I was on this one, sorry about that. Um, so we're doing five up, two right, ah, here we go. The reflection over the x-axis. All right, so now remember this is the toughest part is how is this going to change all of the x and y values? The two to the right means I need to write plus two for my x values. The reflection over the x-axis is gonna make my y values become the opposite, and the five up means I'm gonna add five to those y values. So make sure you feel comfortable with that. Come see me if you do not, because you gotta know that for the test. So adding two is gonna be zero, one, two, three, and four making these y values the opposite. So I have negative four plus five is one, negative one plus five is four. That's not gonna change, so zero plus five is five. Negative one plus five is four, negative four plus five is one. All right, let's see what it looks like when we graph this. So zero, one, one, four, two, five, three, four, and four, one. So this is our new, parabola it should look in terms of its like width it should look the same width it's not uh, thinner or wider than the original one but you can see it has flipped that's the reflection over the x-axis and it also has moved five up and two to the right let's get a new domain a new domain is going to be actually the same as the old domain negative infinity to infinity now the new range is pretty tricky here because it's opening down we're actually gonna have a lowest y value of negative infinity all the way up to the highest y value of five. Okay, so that's it for 14. Now I could have written it down here, I apologize. That's over the top, let me write it down here. And it was negative infinity to five. There we go, okay. Some more triangles. So this one I don't have any um, special cases in terms of like 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Sokotoa. In terms of my looking at the 67 degrees, the 45 side length is the opposite, and this X is the adjacent. So I'm going to do tangent of 67 degrees equals the opposite side, so 45, over the adjacent side, my unknown. I'm gonna make this into a proportion and do cross products, so X times the tangent of 67 degrees equals 45 times one. Moving over that tangent of 67 degrees, I can get 45 divided by the tangent of 67 degrees. Don't forget to use a calculator in degrees, and when you do that, it's approximately 19.1 units. Okay, this one in part B is a 45, 45, 90. So again, that's going to be, this is a, this is a, and this is a times the square root of two. So I'm going to set four times the square root of six equal to a times the square root of two. So I'm going to divide both sides by the square root of two to get four times the square root of six divided by the square root of two equals a. That actually becomes four times the square root of three. All right, so for my x and y, they're both going to be equal to four times the square root of three. Okay, so that is it for part B. Now these next three questions are just asking you to write down when you would use all this stuff. When can you use Pythagorean theorem to solve for a right triangle? Um, I would use Pythagorean theorem when you know two out of three sides. That's when I'd use Pythagorean theorem. For Sokotoa is when I know one out of three and one of the two angles that is not 90 degrees is not 30 degrees, 60 degrees or 45 degrees, right? The idea being that I'm gonna use 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90 if I have it. But again, if you don't know that, it's okay. You can always use Sokotoa. And I think it's beneficial, it's just more efficient, right? I can do these problems faster if I know those relationships, but it's not imperative to know them.
Okay, one more, and then we'll be all finished. So the parent function here is the square root function, which is the square root of x. The original points we've plotted have been 0, 1, 4, 9, and 16. Those are the perfect squares. Taking the square root of those, you get 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So plotting the ones that I can, we have this half of a parabola on its side. All right, so that's the original square root function. Now we are gonna do a lot with this, um, the transformation here. We actually have four, oh my goodness, the first time ever we've got four. So we got the plus three inside, horizontal shift, the minus one outside, vertical shift. The minus in front is going to be a reflection over the x-axis, and that two in front is gonna be a vertical stretch by a factor of two. So you gotta list all of those. So three to the left, I've got one down. I've got a reflection over the x-axis. And my fourth one is vertical stretch by a factor of two. Nice. All right, so here's what's happening to our x values. The only thing changing for the x is going to be that 3 to the left. So I'm going to write minus 3. For the y's, everything else is affecting the y's. We've got that reflection. We've got that vertical stretch. And we've got to move it one unit down. So that's what's happening to our y values. All right, so let's get our new ordered pairs. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. 4 minus 3 is 1. 9 minus 3 is 6. 16 minus 3 is 13. So multiplying 0 times negative 2 is still 0. Minus 1 is negative 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Minus 1 is negative 3. That's going to be negative 5. That's going to be negative 7. And that's going to be negative 9. All right, so let's graph this one and see what it looks like. So negative 3, negative 1. Negative 2, negative 3. 1, negative 5. 6, negative 7. And then 13, negative 9 would be off the grid. So here's what it looks like to graph this. OK. Now that's going to change our domain and range. For the new domain, our lowest x value is negative 3. And our highest y value is going to be infinity. Now our new range, this is the tough one here. Because we've reflected it, all right, we're actually our lowest y value is going to be negative infinity. And the highest y value is going to be negative 1. All right, guys, so that is it. Please come see me if you have any questions. I wish you good luck on the first test.